welcome to another review where today we're going to be reviewing the Tittman M4 Carbine. Airsoft? Airsoft, yes. Tittman Airsoft, people. Yes, people. Not paintball, Airsoft. Airsoft. Yeah, you heard it, people. Airsoft. That's right. All right, so um, before I get to the actual gun, I just want to um, show you guys what you're going to get. Um, when you open the box, straight out, straight out of the box, you're going to get an 80-round Tittman mid-cap. Now, in in the um, in the mid cap, you have this hole right here that holds a 12 gram, and you can stick the 12 gram in, and you can feed it into the rifle, and the rifle will pierce the 12 gram top, the 12 grams top, and you can shoot it like that. Um, just a little, just a little, um, just a little something so you guys know about the 12 gram situation. Um, I probably, us personally, we probably wouldn't use the 12 grams um, because. Um, let's just say, let's just state a quick, like, little example, that you're in the middle of a field, and you're running one of these mags, and you run out of ammo. Now, now, this is just a straight-up fact. A, a, C, a 12 gram CO2 round can shoot way more than 80, um, airsoft pellets. So, when you run out of airsoft pellets, and you take the mag out, the CO2 that was in that canister is going to be gone, so you're not going to be able to, um, use it anymore, and it's just going to be CO2 wasted. So... It's probably not a good idea that you run CO2, um, but I've seen guys do it. But I've also seen videos of guys who have a hard time ejecting the um, magazine out of their um, rifle just because the CO2 is still stuck in there, so you, you have to put a lot of force to get these things out. Now we're going to show you guys, we're going to have a quick little shooting video. We have a target set up, and we're going to show you guys how actually, it works. Actually, uh, before he says that, we actually, um, we aren't gonna, we aren't going to be able to shoot the... 12 grams through there because you have to actually put this piece in the gun first. Oh, yeah. So we've got the 12 grams. He can show you how they go in there, but we won't be able to actually shoot it with the 12 grams because right now we're set up to run remote line. So um, we wouldn't be able to use the 12 grams because you have to use one or the other. You can't do it on the fly. You either go one way or you go the other. So it's set up right now for remote line, and it's not that hard. Um, it's just a couple things you have to take out and drop. this drops in, you screw it in, and you're done. It takes no time at all. But for the purposes of this video, uh, we will do a shooting part, but we'll do it with the remote line and the tank uh, instead of the uh, instead of the, the that magazine. But we can show you how you put them in, so he, he'll show you how to do it. All right, guys. So like like you said, sorry about that. I didn't mean to say that. Um, so um, just so, just so to show you guys how um, the piercing works, we have a 12 gram right here. Now the way you want to do it is you obviously want to stick your 12 gram in, but there's a little button that you want to press. You want to press that little button on the side. And the 12 gram is going to fall right in. It's not coming out. Um, to take it out, you just press the button, and it'll come right out. But, you, but just to um, get it in, you just push this little button, and it'll stay in. Now, there's a, now in, when you insert the piece that you need for the um, gun, um, it's going to, if you look at this little um, piercing Actually, thing. Actually, it's here. Oh, wait, yeah. It's right, it's right yeah, there. Yeah, messed up there. So it sits in the gun this way. And then when you, when you, when you put the thing in, it, 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 there's a needle in there that pierces the CO2 canister. If you look at it, obviously we're not gonna. It's not gonna yeah. pierce it now. It's not gonna pierce but it. But I, I believe it sits actually this way. Because yeah. You see how it's got a cutout. So what happens? It sits in the gun that way, and when you or this way, and when you put it in there, this, it go, this slides in and sits right there. And then when you push in the rest of the way, I, actually, if I did it, it would probably gas up and all the gas would shoot out of the back of it. But basically, that's how it works. Yeah. So, um, sorry about my little fact. I, I usually mess up sometimes, but <laughs> so um, that's how the CO2 will work. Um, but just for our shooting video, we're going to be running a Vulcan, a Vulcan tactical um, remote line. Um, so that's just the remote line we're going to be using, and we're just going to be running a HBA tank with it. So um, yeah, and we're going to be using um, KWA oh, yeah. KWA mid caps, mid caps, which we, we've used before in this gun, and they shoot fine. They're the K120s. Uh, good mags. I love these. I use them in my, in my AG, and um, they worked good in this gun last time. Um, so now down to the actual gun itself, which is pretty exciting. Now um, we're gonna go from the back to the front. Now starting with the stock, you have a four um, lock um, or a four set um, stock, so um, you can put it in four different settings, including it closed. Now um, this, the gun itself. Um, weighs about 5.5 5 pounds um, with mag included, um, full with BBs and all that. Um, the gun with, I think the 
with the gun with the stock closed is about 30 inches, right? Yeah, about 30 or inches. Yeah. Open, yeah. Either opened or closed, it's about I 30 it's inches. I believe it's with yeah. the stock collapses 30 inches. Yep. So now, then from there, you're going to get your um, flip up sights. Um, they're adjustable. Yeah, um, they almost look like like uh, P, like Magpul yeah. PTS or Magpul Emba sights. Yeah. They're very similar. They're made by they're Titman. They're, they're made they're by pretty Titman. Darn, they're pretty darn yeah. close. I mean, quality wise, you know, they, they seem pretty good. Yeah. Well, time will tell, but they seem pretty good. Yeah. He's, yeah. So um, then what you have, I actually want to just tell you guys a little something about the, the um, M4. If you guys play paintball, if any, if we have any paintballers watching this video, um, this gun is very based off of the Tipman 98 custom. Now, um, it for this gun, it's fully mechanical. Like it obviously runs on air and stuff, so it's fully mechanical. But it can run on um, semi and full auto. Now, the way that that works is that it uses an RT system in it, and um, art for the airsofters that don't know what RT is, it's just um, it's a what, what, what's it's the, reactive yeah, trigger. Reactive it's an trigger. old paintball paintball technology that, that Titman actually used in their 98 Customs and their A5s. It's a drop-in for the 98 Custom, and it comes standard on one of the A5s. And basically what it is, it's a little piston that sits in the back of the trigger group that in this gun, it actually, it's a little miniaturized version. On the paintball gun, it's a little bit bigger. It's, it looks like the size of like a small C battery, maybe a little smaller than a C battery. It almost looks like a 9-volt battery. And this one's a lot smaller. But basically what it does, it's a piston that puts pressure on the, on the trigger. And when you press down on the trigger, it actually, it's called a reactive tool because it pushes against your finger and it almost creates like a bounce effect. And that's how you get full auto in this gun, which is nice because it's a completely mechanical full auto and it's completely adjustable. Yes. You can actually adjust the rate of fire on this gun um, to shoot either, you know, it comes from the factory shooting like, you know, pop, pop, pop pretty slow. But you can get them, there's people out there that have gotten them to go pretty quick. And again, this gun is 100% completely mechanical. There's nothing electronic in this gun play with the sucker in the rain and the mud doesn't matter this gun just does like not have a battery no fcu like the polar stars and the and the wolverines there's nothing in this gun that's electronic it's completely mechanical just like the tipman 98 you can mm. use this one day throw it in your closet next day take it or mm. next weekend take it back out and go back to the field True. and play with it so now i just want to get to the um to the bolt thingy i forgot what it's charging called. handle yeah charging handle now, just like a Timmy 98, it has its um, rammer that you push back. Now, the, now the M4 does the exact same thing. Let me just show you. Um, pull back on your charging handle, and um, as you can see, it gets a, it gets a little hard to push, but that's because you're pulling back the, the charging handle. And then let me just show you guys when you shoot it. Take it off, Seth. Safety. You can see that the gun kicks. Now that that's that's pretty cool because this gun is so realistic. It's just like the M4. It kicks. It's it's pretty cool. It's pretty yeah, cool how that I mean, works. It's, it's it's a you know it's got a pretty good amount of kick for a, an airsoft gun. I mean I've shot gas blowback airsoft guns um, and uh, it's got a pretty good amount of kick. There's guys putting uh, heavier uh, buffer tubes in them or a, a heavier uh, uh, springs in them to make them shoot. Um, buffer tube springs to make it shoot harder um, or have more kick but um, really I mean you know it's an HPA gun with a ton of kick uh, you know as good as the Wolverines and the and the and the, the, uh, the, v the Vulcan V12s and the and the, uh, the Polar Stars are and I've shot them they shoot great I mean they're accurate as all get out they shoot far but one thing that always bothered me and not bothered me but one thing that I kind of didn't like about the Polar Stars is that they give you no feedback at all like the gun doesn't kick at all, which is some people like that. Um, not that I didn't like, you know, not that I didn't like it either way. You give me a Polar Star, I'll play with it, no problem. But it's just weird because you have no feedback. I mean, the gun's shooting, and the only thing you realize with the gun shooting is because you hear the gun shooting, like you hear the air coming out. But you, it, they, they're weird. They're, there's no feedback at all with those guns. With this thing, when you shoot it, and you know you're shooting it, and it's loud, and yeah. and I'm sure that it's you know coming. You know, when you go to an airsoft field. People will take notice with this thing because it's a loud, louder than pretty much anything out there right now. Yep. So it's uh, it's it's nice. It's, it's, it's going to be fun to take this thing out to the field. Can't wait to go to Fold the Gap this year in October. Yeah, it's going to be gonna fun. Be great. Yeah. All right, guys. So um, just like the mosquito. Yeah, crazy <laughs> mosquito and fed. Yeah, we're getting killed out here. All right. So um, like like the real one for you have your little pin. Let me just show you guys. You can pull the pin out right here. You got it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'll do it for you. Okay, pull out that pin. You can pull out your pin. Okay. 
kind of hard to pull out. When, when it's new, it's uh, cause I had a yeah. hard time taking this thing out the other day when but, it was. There we go. Yep. Sorry for the struggle, guys. The two halves yeah. break apart, just, just like, like a real M4. Just like a real M4. And everything, actually, if you, I'm not going to do it, but if you pull this out, the, the, the hammer, bolt, transfer, all that stuff, the whole working comes, comes out of it. And it looks like, basically, it looks like a miniaturized 98 Custom. There. Yep. That, that's basically that, that's what it looks basically like. That's basically what it is and inside. The, and then here, you take, you can put this, you get the, the, the safety, and you put it on, on in the middle, and it comes out, and your whole trigger crew pops out of the gun. Yeah, so I this mean, is, they're like so thing, easy to take apart. Yeah, it's ridiculous. This, like just like the Tipman 98, man, these things you pull, you pull a screw and the whole thing comes off. So yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a, I, I dare to say honestly that it's probably even easier than a 98 Custom to take apart. Because yeah. personally, for me, as much as I like Tipman and I played with Tipmans over the years, it's kind of a pain to take them apart because you got to split the two halves and all that stuff. And really, it's fun to just pull the pin out on your, on you know, or pull the bolt on your geo out and just run a squeegee through it. So. I love you, Tipman, but you know I need to come out with this easier system to clean the guns with. All right, so like you said, that that's his, that's the issue with um, some Tipman guns, which I'm sure in the future they're going to have easier. I mean, they got the no. flip top one they came out with that's a lot easier to clean for the yeah. Rammel guns, that FT12 or the TF12. But um, but yeah, I mean this gun is, I mean it's really good. It's very well built. It looks like it's going to be durable. It's got a, a steel out, outer barrel. Um, they went with a polymer front grip, not my favorite thing in the world, but it saves on some weight, and you know what, if you really, really don't like it, you can change it out. I probably won't, honest, to be honest with you, unless I come up with a cheap rig somewhere, I, I won't get rid of it. Um, you know, you, these are removable, so yeah, you can, the rails uh, are removable. and it's got like a 45 degree angle hole, so you can literally get rails and put them 45 degrees, put a flashlight, put a laser, you can get, or whatnot. You can get rails and stuff in your little parts kit, let me just show you guys. Couple rails. And there's some smaller rail segments in there, so you can take these yeah. big ones out and like, you know, put a little one just for a flashlight and leave the rest of it smooth. So you can pretty much, you know, do whatever you want with that. Um, another note is, upper and lower receiver on this gun is metal or aluminum alloy. It's probably the same stuff they make their the 98 Customs and all their other guns out of. Some people might say it's pop metal. I don't know. They look pretty durable to me. They look like pop metal, but uh, I may be wrong. Um, top up adjustment is on this side. Here, I'll give you this little real second back. Top up adjustment is on this side. It's a little, it's an Allen key or hex key right in there. That's how you adjust your hop up. There's been um, some um, debate about the whole hop up thing. Some people are not getting very good range with these. Some people are getting lucky out of the box and getting good range. We've got number 2176 is our serial number. It's a big thing about serial numbers and which ones shoot good, which ones shoot dope, which ones don't. Early ones, apparently, people had issues with. But I've seen posts from people with early ones that say that they shot just fine and they have great range and they haven't done any mods to them. Other people say that they won't shoot more than 40 feet without the balls going crazy and they've had to do all kinds of mods. There's a mod that I've seen where they take this screw out of here and they drop a spring in there with a screw behind it and then push it all the way down and put like a an ACOG or a, a, a Neotech or something to hold it all in, uh, or like a rail segment, uh, a little uh, a rail cover. Uh, I've seen people do all kinds of mods to their barrels and putting in their uh, uh, type board barrels and all this crazy stuff. I am hoping to run it stock, and I hope it runs good stock, because I'm not one to do all that stuff to my guns. I usually just run my stuff stock. Uh, I don't think I've ever, unless I bought it used and it came all upgraded, I've, I'm not very good for that, to shell out a bunch of money. I've already paid for this. Hopefully it runs good. Um, if I have to, I like it, so hopefully if I have to, I may have to just upgrade it. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much my deal. Yep. Uh, I don't know if you forgot anything. The Yeah, the flash hider was actually super easy to unscrew. Thank God. It's got a, it's got a grub screw on it. Yeah. And it, it pulls out super easy. And then you just unscrew it, which it goes, I want to say counterclockwise, but anyway. You unscrew it, and it unscrews really easy. It didn't, it wasn't very hard to, because sometimes these guns, like guns that I've gotten, like, uh, Guns that I've gotten from like KWA yeah, and, like and Classic possible. Army, they like glue the friggin' flash hider to the gun and then to take it off, it's a mission. Luckily, these guys didn't do that. They just, I think it's because I tightened it down. That's why it's kind of hard to take off. I don't want to mess with it. I don't want to mess up the threads on the on the barrel. But um, yeah. I will I will most likely take this off and put another flash hider. I hate running around with this orange thing. I keep my guns in a gun bag. I don't I don't go around waving around the people in public. So I don't, I don't like using this. Uh, unless I go out of state, I think you have to... Some places you have to have this on there when you're traveling, 
So I'll keep it with me and I, if, I, if I'm going from one state to another, which unless we go to like Irene or something, we're not going to be going from one state to another. Um, I'll have to switch this out. So. Yeah, so, but like but anyway, you said, like, classic, classic army and stuff, like, it's impossible to get off these flash hiders. You sometimes. Remember, remember my G&G um, combat machine? You have man? to that practically thing was break like, that thing apart to get it off. It was yeah, like, that thing was they, they used, like, half a pound of, of, of crazy glue to get to put that thing on there. So I don't know what the, I don't, I don't know what, uh, I don't know what, what the, uh, what, what the, Ch what the Chinggis are doing up there, but, man, they're, and in Taiwan and China where they make those things, but. Uh, but yep, we're gonna do a little shooting video for you here in a minute. We're gonna connect the uh, remote line. We got a target out there. Um, I'm not sure how far we are. I'm gonna estimate about probably about 50 feet, maybe a little more. Maybe we'll count it out 50, for you. 50, we'll see about 50, 60 feet for, to the target, and we'll see how it shoots. All right, we're back, and um, we're getting ready to shoot the Timon M4. Um, we're run, like like we said in the video, we're running the K120s, um, the KWA mid cap. Um, we're gonna go ahead and load it up. Alright, let's see how it goes. Oh, before I shoot, we have the tank in the bag, so we have it hooked up to the remote line. Um, guys, I'm going to go out there a little bit. I'm going to walk out, and he's going to shoot at the target. Just so you guys can see um, him hitting the target. And like I said, we're about probably 50 feet from the target. And uh, right now we're not having any accuracy problems that I can see. Now let's see if my son can shoot at this target without hitting his old man. Alright, ready? Yep. Woo. I mean, he's hitting right on there. That one's hitting the face. Yeah, there you go. Oh, Alright. Alright, right. hold on. And as you can see, you can see where he's standing. It's a good, I, I, I mean, see. We're getting ready to shoot, we're getting ready to shoot full auto, guys, so, um, yeah. Hold on, stay tuned. Don't worry, I'm not pointing the gun right now. We're getting, all right, let's go ahead and shoot at full. Actually, we're more about 20, we're like 25 feet away. Yeah. So I miscalculated. Back up a little bit, get a little more sniper range. No, that's fine. You can go ahead and shoot at full auto. We're shooting full auto now. All right, get ready, guys. It's gonna be slow, because it's out of the box, guys, remember. It's out of the box. Out of the box, but... This is with no adjustment. It's out of the box, stock, um, full auto. It, it can, you can make it go a lot faster than that. All right. Okay, so that's it, guys. This is the video of the Tipman M4. You can see right there, connected to the, to the, uh, to the remote line. And uh, go ahead and subscribe. Comment, like, share. Yeah, whatever you want. <laughs> Thank you, and have a nice day.